uh, according to Trev, after winning at Cheltenham on the 20th of October, is in there. Dursey Sound. Also, I shot the Sheriff, who was victorious at Weatherby on the 17th of October. In fact, on the same day as Dursey Sound was. And um, you'll see there Village Vic as well, who finished second uh, on the 19th of October, Village Vic. So um, once again, as you would expect with a race of this nature, uh, at this stage, a race with, uh, with quality throughout. And as you'll have seen for that caption, at one stage the race was being entertained for a horse we've just seen winning here, Hold Court. So you suspect he won't be taking up his engagement at Cheltenham this coming Sunday. But there are all sorts of other possibilities in the race as well. You've got the likes of According to Trev, who's already scored at Cheltenham this autumn. Yeah. Bit of a guessing game, really, because we don't know what's going to run. Well, we don't. And, you know, Fox runs in there, Coney Gray, the horse mm. that, that won well at Utoxeter. Um, so, yeah, there was a host of promising novices as well and, and of course according to Trev um, Nigel's got Nigel Twist and Davis has got two nice novices hasn't he yeah. this year the new one and, and this horse and both of them have made their mark already at uh, Presbury Park you mentioned Coney Gree um, he is a nice horse and I saw him win a bumper New Toxeter as well yeah. in the spring what a weekend it would be for the Bradstocks yeah. if he could run well and Carruthers could run well on Saturday he's related to Carruthers isn't mm. he is he a half brother I half think, something, uh, something I think down the line is he brother. I'd need to check that but yeah. I think you might be right yes absolutely I mean it could be a big weekend for him, couldn't it? Got a bumper runner as well here at Ludlow. Yeah, um, yes. So it would be good for the family to have some success. Yeah. Uh, he, he was very impressive and, and nicely backed as well, winning, winning on his, his comeback as well. And he, he looked almost like a, a future Midlands national winner, the way he sort of ploughed through the, the Utoxeter turf to, to win on that occasion, rain softened turf. So um, he's, he's obviously interesting. Dirty Sound is going very much going the right way, won yeah. his last two. Um, it looks a race chock full of. You know, informative performance for the future, really. And it's it's the it's the first test really for these novices, isn't mm -hmm. it? It is half brother incident. You are right, Matt Conigree. That has been confirmed by the experts back at headquarters. Um, you know, they've for the most most part they've gone and won the novice hurdle. Yes. You know, somewhere this autumn, small yeah. race, and now they're all being pitched in together. That's right. For the first time. Yeah, but it's a, it represents a big step up, you know, because you're you're quite often taking on a different grade of of, of horse. Well, you obviously are, as it's a grade two, but you know, in a gr different grade of trainer than perhaps would have you know Coney Reed would have faced at, at Utoxeter. So mm. um, it's a good barometer for how far they've come and how quickly they've come and. You know, there will be one or two shattered reputations come, come you know, four o'clock on the Sunday, and that's not just from this race, but, um, you know, there'll be a, one or two with harbouring dreams of, of, you know, further lucrative prizes down the line. Yes, just a chance that the winner will have been promoted to anti-post favourite for the Neptune at the Cheltenham yeah, Festival in five yeah. months' time. Well, it's the it, way it goes. You know it? that the markets, because they're all formed so early now, you know, the last ten years, I think Coral were one of the first firms to start bringing out markets, and Cashman's many years ago used to bring out a market on virtually every race then you know once anything wins it, it gets shoveled in about eight points or ten points and becomes your new second favorite for whatever race did um i don't know whether you you saw the race or whether you've had the opportunity to see the the race at weatherby that i shot the sheriff one a couple of weeks ago i think i've watched ago. it on tape once yes. yeah it was, i said a couple of weeks ago about three weeks ago it's weatherby's first meeting it was, a, it was an ordinary race yeah. um but he was well supported quite like the style in which he did it a very different test if he runs on sunday but yeah. He was comfortably on top in the end. Yes, he. I mean, he sort of loomed alongside, didn't he? Another winner in these colours for, for the pipe team. Um, Royal Mile, I think, won for them, didn't he? At Chepstow, mm. uh, around about this time as well. And I mean, he won with any margin in hand. I mean, there's absolute double digits back to the, the third and fourth here. Uh, and he's, he's sort of bolted clear of them, hasn't he, pretty much? They didn't jump the last, of course. But he's had a, he's had a gallop in with a furlong, furlong and a half, really, from the second last. But one with any amount in hand looks a really, really exciting type, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I thought physically as well. I thought he was quite an imposing type. I saw him in the parade ring at Weatherby, and mm. you, all things are relative, aren't they, when you're looking at horses in relation to everything else yes. that's in the race? Sure. But he, he really did take the eye. Mm. I shot the sheriff, and as a, as a starting point, I thought that was yes, that was good yeah, enough. excellent. And, and given, as we touched on earlier on, the the yards 
um, prowess at, at landing races at this meeting. You know, what, what we've got 18, 20 races this meeting, and the way that they, they have farmed them in, in the last 10 years, then he's got to be an interesting one. Yeah. Of course, Dursey Sound, who's in the race on Sunday, you touched on him already, he yeah. won on the same card. He won yeah. the second division of that uh, Weatherby race. Um, yeah. That was on the back of his success. Where do you want before? Was it Chepstow or you talked to her? I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it's name escapes me as well. But, I mean, yeah. he did it in, in you know quite stylish fashion as well. Um, he beat four I'd, jacks. He went on to win at Hexham. Yeah, I don't know how this time's stacked up. That's remiss of me. And, of course, they jumped, they jumped the last they here. They jumped the last they? compared to when I shot the show, if you didn't, yeah. Um, just had to be shaken up a little bit to see off for Jacks, who, who goes nicely, doesn't he? I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a likeable type, and as you say, he went and won at Hexham, which isn't an easy place to win. Um, you know, quite an individualistic track. And Dursey Sands showed good, you know, good manner of ability and a good, you know, good gritty attitude to go past his rival on that occasion. Yeah. They had a novice hurdle winner at Exeter as well, didn't they? The yards. So. They did. At least yes. those novices are coming back into some form now yeah. after a quiet spell. Yeah, and the first two in that race, they came a long way clear. Mm. Um, as you said, you mentioned the, you know, the Hexham win for four jacks. I thought uh, with four jacks that uh, he was returning from a lengthy absence, so on the face of it, you say, well, that runner-up is going to come on a bundle yes. for that race, and perhaps he did, but it was on a day where a couple of other Tim's horses returning from an absence also ran well. Lee Lend yes. on the same card on yeah. the back of a lengthy absence ran well in the handicap chase, so they were perhaps just a little bit further forward yeah. at this time year than is often the way, so. Absolutely. And you, you say know. there was 20 legs back to the third as yeah. well, so that form does look decent. So I think you might just be able to rate up Jersey Sands' performance yeah. in that one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just you, it's a bit of a who's who, really, of, of promising novice hurdlers, isn't it? Um, you know, it's probably one of the better better races of the weekend, to be honest, with for unexposed horses with, with tons of potential that are going to go through the season and win their twos and threes, probably. Probably one of the most exciting novice hurdles that we've seen this autumn was the New Ones uh, race at yes. the showcase yeah. meeting at Cheltenham. Yeah. Um, now, he beat Village Vic, Village Vic in that race. Village Vic, of course, is a possible for Sunday's race as well. This is it. Yeah, I mean, this was a terrific heat, and, uh, you know, the Philip Hobbs team hold the, the runner-up in, in quite high regard, don't they? He's, he's got to be one of the best maiden hurdlers in training at the moment. And, mm. you know, the New One, obviously uh, an exceptional prospect, very talented, exciting type. Just a, just a lovely way of going about him, very exuberant um, way of, of galloping and he just looked in a spot of trouble there, just a little little fluff at the last and yeah, got into the bottom Village of it. Village Vic really came Village up. Village Vic it? pinged it, but here Sam knows that he's you know, going to go and put good daylight between himself and the second and, and the second in turn is, is quick and well clear of the other place horses. So um, really nice, really nice performance, probably from the first two home. Yeah. When you when you look at races from a, from a tipping point of view, mm -hmm. um, in your role as Robin Goodfellow of the Daily <laughs> Mail, how do you how do you try and assimilate the different form lines? Because as we've said already, they've they've each now by and large come from one novice hurdle, two novice hurdles yeah. maybe this autumn. Uh, Village Vic hasn't won one yet, but he went pretty close mm -hmm. to behind a decent sort. Most of the others have have won their novice, and now this is the first big test. So. Yeah, what do you difficult. use as a starting point? I mean, point? it is difficult. I've got, you know, a, a colleague of mine compiles um, sort of his own speed ratings on the on the jump, so um, I, I certainly make use of those. They're a starting point, but they're not they're not the end product by any stretch of the imagination. I think just just watching races really and and so try, based upon sort of gut instinct. Or it has to be in some seen. respects, doesn't it? It okay. has to be. Um, it, it's I think it's difficult to. When you've got so many unexposed, potentially smart horses in opposite, those are the hardest races to tip in for me because horses can improve seven to ten pounds and and yeah. just go beyond what you think they're capable of very quickly. When you've got young horses that are having their first and second runs over hurdles, it's a bit easy with the handicappers because you have probably between six and twenty races to assess their ability, what yeah. their favourite tracks are, what the ground is, you know, what time of year do they come right, what grade do they win in, what type of races do the stable do particularly well in so you've got a few more angles in but with these younger horses the more precocious ones it's it's harder to try and assess what they are actually capable of yeah. most of the time you'll put a lot of faith i would suggest in in the trainers you know you'll know that paul nichols targets that that novice chase on the sunday or you know nicky henderson might ta ta you know target one particular mm. race or the pipes might do in a particular do well in so, a particular race so then by extension they know what type of horse is needed yes. to win an average 
renewal of that yeah. race. I mean, some it? of the time they they probably do the tip for you because you, you'll be you'll be looking at horses through the season um, and then you'll think, oh, that might go well in that race that they've done well in before, and if it lines up in that race, then that's almost a, a tip in itself and it's suggesting to you that yeah, perhaps your gut instinct was right. But it is difficult and it. They're very hard races to bet in because, you know, you could almost bet five. The fit. Like if you look at that race now, if you had to price that novice hurdle up now, anti-post, it'd be very difficult to find a favourite because you've yes, got so yes. much exciting raw ability in the race that it's just near nigh and impossible. I've got a feeling Paul Nichols's horse will be, be pretty much to the fore when it fox run because mm-hmm. he was tremendously impressive um, last time out. But, it, you know, it's trying to work out... What, what's a fair price uh, and what is a price just purely on a stable or a jockey or you know or, or hype um, and th- th- there's, there'll be some exceptional horses there that will get beaten and finish fourth, fifth, sixth but will run great races and, and pick up the number of races through the rest of the season but you know they won't win on Sunday well, There are all sorts of other possibles we haven't even touched upon as well according to Trev well you think they've had a pretty good line where they stand or they should do with Village Vic for example with him the new one stable companion to according to Trev having beaten Village Vic in that race that we saw Maggio who bolted up in a novice's hurdle at the weekend might come over again uh, he was entered up in that um, graduation chase at Kempton the other day, didn't run in that and went for an always hurdle instead. So, uh, on the face of it, at least, it could be an exciting race. It's the Neptune Investments Management Novices Hurdle, it's the Grade 2 Novices Hurdle at Cheltenham on Sunday.